Good afternoon. That's not going to work. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Pastor Dave Schreffler, I'm the pastor at Zion Lutheran Church. Right across uh, the way here, that's where the, the uh, reception is after the service. You're all welcome to join us downstairs in the basement. Uh, I was telling the family you can either go out the front door of Trev's Bowser and go in the front door of Zion, or you can go out the back door here and go in the back door of Zion. If you go in the back door, that takes you to the elevator. If you need an elevator, we're downstairs in Fellowship Hall. You're all welcome. Uh, but I'll be over there trying to help people find their way to get. You really can't get lost between here and there. <laughs> and you should have a bulletin that has everything that you need to know about the service in the, in the bulletin. Uh, there is a time for sharing uh, for the family and friends. If you have something you want to share about art. Uh, if you have not already turned your cell phones down, I ask you to do that now. Just out of respect for the family. And, you think, and if you think you have, check it again just to make sure. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The bolded parts are your parts in the service. So. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy, and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows, so that we can comfort others in their sorrows, with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Jesus Christ, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Art Felty. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is the 23rd Psalm, and if you notice it's bolted, so I invite you to say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Before we do the gospel reading, we're going to have a time for remembrances. And I invite John, Bill, he's the only person I know with two first names, to come up and share. Thank you. Thank you. Some people know me as John, my school. Some people know me out in public as Bill, but the middle name is William. It's a privilege to be up here to speak on behalf of Art. He was a dear good friend of mine, like a brother. His wife was like a sister to me. His kids were like my own kids when they were little. Uh, we will be dearly missed. Uh, I wish him and his family the best of luck. We're all here for you guys. If you need anything, let us know. Uh, but again, he was a great guy. He did a lot of fun. We have a couple guests in here from our school that have graduated with us. We all hung out together, raised a lot of cane in the roads, did a lot of trouble in school, and he was right there for it. So, the one last word I'd like to say, he was, he was like the follow leader guest. We were all follow leaders. Uh, if people don't remember us, when we used to go up the stairs in the school, we used to go, ho, like one of the wrestlers did at the wrestling court. That's a wrestling match. You know, 
class to get yelled at. <laughs> but in Maryland, they live in our hearts forever. And God bless. Thanks, man. I just do want to open it up. If somebody has something to share, I won't make you come up front. If you have something you want to share, a story, or a remembrance of art. From the sound of it, there are a lot of stories. Um, from the sound of it. Uh, and there will be time, of course, during the, the, the lunch to share those stories as well. So I'll stop talking. I'll just give you a moment. with sadness, who's struggling with grief, to just cheer up 
right? I find that almost to be an invective, an insult. Instead of telling me to cheer up, I'd rather someone say, why don't you tell me what's bothering you? I'm here to listen to you. So where am I going with this? Well, there's a lot in this life that can make someone happy. Like winning the Powerball when the pot is up at a billion dollars, right? That might make us happy. But there's also a lot of pain and suffering to bring even the cheeriest of person to their knees. Happiness is nice, but maybe there's more to this life than just the pursuit of happiness. At the end of the last testament, uh, the, the end of the last book in the Old Testament, the prophet Malachi says, Lo, I will send you the prophet Elijah, so that I will not come and strike the land with a curse. The last word in the Old Testament is the word curse. The word is katara. So the Old Testament ends on not so happy to know. And then we get to the first book of the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew. And when Jesus began, began to teach what we heard in the Gospel lesson, the Sermon on the Mount, the very first word out of his, his mouth was the word blessed. It's a Greek word, makairos. It can be translated as happy or blessed. So we go from a warning of being cursed to Jesus saying, blessed are, happy are those who feel cursed, or happy are those who mourn. The first four blessings, we call them the Beatitudes because it comes from the Latin word for blessed, which is Beatitudo. The first two blessings in the Greek verbiage are blessed are the tokoi, or the poor in spirit, and blessed are the pentotes, those who mourn. You see, Jesus was speaking to a community who was suffering, <coughs> who was mourning, people who were not living in happy conditions. These people were experiencing misery and sorrow and grief. But I think there's more going on than Jesus just pointing out the obvious. Jesus is naming and claiming and giving people hope. Now you're going to say, well, how does that give people hope? Blessed are those who mourn. Well, to be blessed in the blessings that Jesus is saying, he's describing something that's true about someone, but not something someone says about themselves. Let me say that again. Something that's true about someone, but it's not something they would say about themselves. In other words, to be blessed, as in the word makairos, is a state of being. It's a reality. It's an inner state of truth, no matter how you actually feel. You don't have to feel happy to be blessed. Amen? Oh, come on. Amen? Amen? You don't have to feel happy to be blessed. And to play this out, the intent of Jesus' words is that we can be makaros, we can be blessed, and be in miserable circumstances. Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn. So blessed are you does not mean untroubled are you, or healthy are you, or prosperous are you. Blessed means blessed are you between you and God, all things are well. Even if you're weeping over the loss of a loved one. True blessedness is not like happiness. Today, no one feels happy with the death of our Lord. Nobody. And in the manner in which he left this earth. But Jesus tells us today, blessed are you because God mourns with you. Blessed are you because you... Your sorrow brings you close to the heart of God. Because we have a God who weeps with us. Blessed are you because you will see your husband and your father and your friend again in the resurrection. So let's take a moment and talk about art. What I've been able to learn about art. Because I did not have no art in this world. He was born on February 3rd, 1970. He died on December 24th. Art and Laura were married for 32 years. I'm happy as a pastor people stay married 32 days. <coughs> 32 years. Amen? Amen? They have two sons, Arthur and Adam. Family was a big deal to Art. He loved his family. His family told me Art was the kind of person who was willing to help anyone else. No matter the circumstances. Now, there is one reason I know I 
would have liked to know our audience. He loved Middlesworth barbecue potato chips. He loved Middlesworth barbecue. I didn't know as a kid there were any other kind of chips in this world than Middlesworth potato chips. There's a bag of Middlesworth at the, at the, at the reception. Of course, as many of you know, the Felties have a business, the Felty Lawn and Tree Maintenance. Art and his father, I was told, started this business out of the back of a hatchback when he was station wagon, when he was 12, maybe. Yeah. His father passed it on to Art. He's passing it on to his kids. Oh, Aiken did his job. Yeah? His wife. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to run your own business. It seems his art never was lacking that energy. You like to crack jokes? Apparently he could be really goofy. He loved the outdoors. He saw pictures of there from their camper in Potter County. He loved to go fishing, look for elk. He was a huge Steelers fan. And a fighting Phillies fan. Who knows why, right? Opposite ends of the state. And if Art has any toys in the Steelers game this weekend, I don't know. One of the worst parts of death, of course, is that we lose people who are such an integral part of our family, of our lives. But we have those memories. You have those memories of Art. They will remain. But we feel sad. You know, our lives are emptier when we lose a father or a grandfather or a brother or a friend. It hurts a lot. And when there's a death, we begin to worry about our own mortality. We might have those questions like, will we see them again? And that's the good news of the gospel, the joy of the resurrection we celebrate as Easter people. Just as Jesus was heaping good news to the people who were standing there that day that he was giving them the Sermon on the Mount, when he delivered the Beatitudes, we need to hear that good news today. The Beatitudes are not just judgments for the thou shalt and thou shalt not. The Beatitudes, the teachings of Jesus, are a blessing for any who trust in Jesus to join themselves to God's kingdom as it comes near to us in Jesus Christ. But when we die as people of faith, are crossing over from, the, from this age, when we go from life to death to, to new life through the resurrection, it will be like a family for you. All those people who have died before us, those we have not seen for a long time, will greet us as we enter into God's kingdom, into the place Jesus is preparing for each one of us. This is our Christian faith. This is where we place our hope. God does not take people from us. God welcomes them into the place he's preparing for all of us. So art is whole again in heaven, having been welcomed by God, be greeted by those who have passed on before him. Now, does that take away the hurt completely? Of course not. But it will get better. And what makes it get better is first, we just carry on that memory. We share those stories. We laugh about the ways Art made us laugh. We, we remember the ways he just was so helpful in this life. But we also remember how much God loves each one of us and the promise to see them again. But the death of a loved one can change us. And it's up to us how it changes us. And ultimately, it matters how we live. We are called to enjoy life, of course. But we are also called to serve others, to help to make the lives of others better. That's how we live into the blessings of God. So Art's present on, on this earth may be over, but his story is not. He's just moved on to another story. Life will not be better without Art. That's not possible. But having a God who blesses us each and every day with such abundance of love is a blessing we need to cherish. 
I can tell you with great certainty that Jesus is alive and present with us now. And then living into Jesus' love, we have the opportunity for life in this age and in the age to come. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to listen to a song. The family has asked that we play a song. It is titled, See You Again. chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care. 
that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks, because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. That neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from the love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend art to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Arthur Belty III. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. As we do the litany of remembrance, just please respond with me. We remember him. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember it. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember it. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember it. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember it. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember it. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember it. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember it. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember it. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember it. So long as we live, he too shall live. He is now part of us as we remember him. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Oh my, amen. I rest eternal grant in the Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Amen. So let us go in peace.